Hey Deharma, it's Lauren Hitch. We're here at Uncle John's Soap in Berlin, Maryland. And I'm here with John Conley, he's the owner. Hello. And Megan's over here too. <laughs> His daughter's here helping out of the shop. This is a pretty popular place. We've heard a lot about it. You've, you've been on Fess Up Friday with Corey. Yep. So, and you, you've done some segments. So we wanted to come to you this time. We wanted to check out the shop and get to know you more. Very cool. All right, so you started the shop up three years ago, but making soap goes back further than that for you. Tell me how you got started in this. So. I was home a lot. Uh, my wife was reading up a lot on you know things to do around the house to save money, and we wanted to go a little bit greener. So she found a laundry soap recipe online. She wanted me to make it for her. Okay. So I did. It was liquid. It was atrocious. <laughs> I hated it. It looked like egg drop soup in a five gallon bucket. Um, so I started messing around with the powdered formulas and tweaked it and made it my own, and it was a hit. Um, my wife loved it. Used it for about a month or two, and then asked me if I knew how to make bath soap. Okay. <laughs> and that's kind of where it started taking a life of its own. All right, so then you started making bath soap. And how did you find out how to do that also online? Mostly YouTube, Google. Um, this was about six years ago, okay. maybe, maybe slightly more. Um, so, you know, Google and YouTube were just so in your face anyway, right. so it was so easy to search for things. I did read one book about soap making, but it was older That's than cool. I was, so <laughs> it was a help, but, you know, online's faster. Um, and again, experiment, you know, because some, mm -hmm. sometimes you find recipes for things online, it's, eh, it's not, it looks great in pictures, but it's not so <laughs> hot, so, you know. So then you started making soap, okay, so laundry detergent soap, yep. and then, it, you know, you kind of started doing this out of your home a lot. Yeah. Yeah, we, we started doing it for mostly for us and family and friends, gifts that first Christmas. Right, that's um, a good idea. And then people said, you know, you should start selling this. And I thought, yeah, right. Um, but then the more I researched, the more I found out there really was a market for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was definitely a healthier option than a lot of the soaps you can buy in the store. Mm -hmm. So it, that's what it was. So, so you're soap now. Now you're in the shop. You've been here for three years. Yep. You said you're right in Berlin. Um, and you used to do a lot of like craft shows and things like that, but now this is kind of your main focus. Yeah, we started out with the local farmer's market in Salisbury and Third Fridays in Salisbury. Mm -hmm. And uh, great local venues, uh, you know, a lot of locals that come and patronize both of those events. Okay. So it worked out. That's cool. So now you guys have been here. And now tell us a little about your soaps. What's, what's the different, you know, what's so different about them and like getting one out of like with a Walmart or something. So many of the commercial soaps you buy now are detergent bars. They're not actually true mm, soap. Okay. So there, there's different chemicals, and everything's a chemical, so I don't want to sound like too, you know, conspiracy theorist kind mm -hmm. of thing. But, um, you know, there's a lot of things that are put in there as lathering agents and things like that when you really don't need it. Mm -hmm. To me, a good old-fashioned bar soap mm -hmm. works just as well for almost anything you're going to clean. Um, and it's made with oils, and lye and water. It's just, it's a simple process. It really is. Um, it sounds complicated the way <laughs> some people make it sound, but it's really not. Okay, so now you've grown. It's not just soap. We're going to make soap, by the way. We're going to get to that. But it's not just soap now. We're going to walk around a shop later. But you got to tell me about this beard. <laughs> <laughs> so the fall before I opened this shop, uh, we were making beard stuff okay. that year before, uh, beard balms and oils. Mm -hmm. And I was pretty much clean shaven. I worked for the Board of Ed and I kind of had to keep it neat. And uh, So I started making beard stuff and somebody bet me that I wouldn't grow it out for a year untrimmed. Okay. And I was still working for the board at the time. So I started <laughs> letting it go. And uh, my principals got a little side eye with me, but, um, but they were good. They were good about it. They knew the deal and why I was doing it to okay. kind of promote our stuff. And uh, it was a little torturous that first year, but... After that, it's it's been good. Now, how long did it get? Um, the first year, I want to say, it got, I don't remember how many inches, but it got down to about here. Okay. And it was kind of rough. Um, <laughs> and it's a little rough right now. I need a trim. But, yeah. <laughs> it looks great. For summer, I'll, I'll you know, right. clean up the sides. And uh, then Tony DeVito, he's a local artist okay. here in the Berlin mm -hmm. area. He does a lot of drawings and, and pencil and ink sketches and things like that. He did a caricature of a photograph that Tony Weig took of me with my hat pulled down over my eyes. Okay. And, and he did a caricature of it. And Tony Weig took it and digitized it and then emailed it to me and said, hey, here's your logo. 
like total surprise. Um, we had a we had a pretty cool logo before that, but it was kind of generic. Uh -huh. So now we've got a logo that's me, which is a little creepy to me, but it's only because it's me. Megan, what do you think about that? I you think, think it should be weird. you? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you know, um, you know, we started putting my face on stuff, and it was a little weird at first, but you know, and it was a little weird for the shave guys because you know they're buying shave soap with a with bearded a picture. guy on yeah, it. You know, <laughs> Well, I shaved my head, so I still shave. That's cool. So you've trimmed it up, mm -hmm. and is this like the normal length? This is roughly about what I like. You got a pretty like stellar to mustache too. Thank you. So. <laughs> yeah, if it goes too much shorter, it gets weird looking. Right. So. <laughs> well, that's very cool. But you're part of the Beard of Men Society. We are. Which have also been on Dunmar Lake before. So tell me a little about how you got into that group. Yep, Beard of Men Society of Ocean City. Um, a couple of the guys started coming in to the shop to buy things, oh. and Alex Otenstein, who. Is part of the club too. He was one of the, I don't know if he was the original members, mm -hmm. but he was pretty early on. Okay. Um, he does a lot of promotional stuff for charities around here, mm -hmm. Dia Kenia and things like that. Right. Uh, Eastern Shore Mountain Biking Association. So he would swing through like a tornado, <laughs> handing out posters to everybody for wow. events. So I would hang posters in the storefront, and then he and Rob Dunn asked me if I would come to the meetings, the Bearded Men Society mm -hmm. meetings. And uh, so I did and joined, and it's been good. I don't have a ton of time to do a lot of the right. volunteer stuff that they do, mm -hmm. but I try to help where I can, and it's right. it's been good. So you enjoy this beard, not going back? I don't, I don't think I could. Uh, not at this point. <laughs> Maybe later. That's very cool. All right, so beer bomb, all that stuff, though, the beer bombs and brittles are very popular now. My yep. husband has a beard. He's all about, like getting it and using it which is fine to me yeah because it does make a difference yep keep it groomed and soft right okay so we're gonna make some soap yep and, it, and you're gonna tell me step by step all about it how awesome it is if you guys have any questions or let us know where you're watching from comment below crystal's with us today she's the lady operating the camera there but <laughs> but we'll get to your comments and stuff if you have questions if you want to have any questions for john just ask away and we'll get to them after we make this soap okay <laughs> all right so let's get started so we're, we're pretty simple folk here. We just make it in a regular old bowl. Uh, you know, it's you see all these film films. Uh, I'm showing my age. You see all these videos online where, uh, you know, big soap companies are making mm -hmm. it in huge vats and big stainless steel pots and things like that. Um, I'm all about small vats. Easy to control, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just, it just works for us. And you, you don't need a lid? Nope. So I no can just lid. bring you all my old exactly. Any that don't have bowls, lids. They bring work them up great. here to John. <laughs> <laughs> we'll recycle them. Okay. So, and what do we have? What do we have in here? In this bowl, we have our hard oils. So, in soap making, you have hard oils and soft oils. Hard oils would be like soy wax, coconut oil, shea butter, okay. palm oil, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, we get those in the bowl first, and then we melt them, which I'm going to start now while we talk. Okay. Just a typical old microwave. <laughs> yep, just a standard old microwave. And we just melt those just enough to get them liquid. And then we'll add our olive oil. That's the biggest part of our recipe is olive oil. So. Okay. And Megan knows how to make this too. Yep, Megan can make everything here in the shop. <laughs> That's very cool. So when people come in, if they don't see you, they'll see Megan. Yep. Family thing. Exactly. That's pretty awesome. So then, once we uh, get that out of the microwave, we're going to add our olive oil. Okay. Which I need to do. Uh -huh. just standard old box store olive oil. <laughs> um, I don't do anything too fancy with that. I've seen some people that will use like extra virgin olive oil and things like that. Honestly, that really doesn't help you in soap. Mm, okay. So save the expensive olive oil for eating and salads <laughs> and things like that. Use the 100% pure olive oil for cleaning. <laughs> yep, <laughs> exactly. Throw this away. Now, how much soap would you say you guys make in a week? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't really keep that well, that track that uh -huh. well. But um, you know, I'd say during our busy season in the summer, we're probably making at least 10 of these a week. Which so that's about that's right? about fifty pounds, twenty four bars for each mold like this. I don't know how much you can see on that screen, but <laughs> <laughs> we use just a regular box wooden mold. And you made this. Yep, yep. I made these, and I'm due to make some more. 
Um, they get a little ratty after a while, mm-hmm. but they, they work great as long as you can keep them from falling apart. And uh, But yeah, we'll pour this. It's just about five pounds, which turns into 24 bars the way we cut them. Mm-hmm. Regular log mold. So you're saying, you know, busy times are like the weekends, but then sometimes a rainy Monday. Yep, rainy Mondays are the best here in Berlin. <laughs> uh, you know, nobody wants to sit on the beach in the rain, so then they come shop. Yeah, that's awesome. So this, you actually, you, you trial and error, you've learned how, about this mold. Like you were telling us earlier that you used to just screw in each side, and now you've yeah. learned to use these. Yep, boxes. we had a drill, and we would, you know, run the screws in to hold the end caps on and keep everything in place. And after a while, the drill died, so we were doing it by hand. I figured, yeah, it's only a couple screws, no big deal, but... Uh, luggage latches have been a, a real savior around mm-hmm. here, especially when I ask Megan to line all the molds most of the time. <laughs> and so I don't have to worry about it either way, but it's easier <laughs> for her now. And then you line this with trash bag liner. Yeah, trash can liners. Um, just like you would see in you know institutions, schools, offices, just the regular old clear trash can mm-hmm. liners. We've learned how to cut them into just the right lengths uh, to line our molds and they don't let the soap stick to the wood and makes it easy to get everything apart. Nice. Good. Gail wants to know where you're located. All right. Where I'm located? Yeah. We're in downtown Berlin, 12 William Street, right next to the police station for now. They built a new building. <laughs> That's got to go a little more. And um, ironically enough, the public restrooms which sells a lot of soap. So yeah, that helps our traffic a lot. Is there soap in there? There's not. They, they health department wouldn't oh, probably wouldn't okay, like okay. us to do that. <laughs> they don't want everybody touching it. So they stay with the liquid soaps right, and things like right. that. But. So what's it, if people, they've always had liquid soaps or whatever, you know, the transition to a bar soap? It can be a little weird because they <laughs> feel different while you're using them. Plus right. after you're done using them, um, some people say that bar soaps, they feel like they leave a film on them, and it depends on who made it, what brand it is, and things okay. like that, what its ingredients are. Um, to me, if I go to a liquid pump soap, um, or shower gel, or things like mm-hmm. that, I feel like that leaves a film. Huh. So, it's it's all a matter of getting used to it. Okay. Um, but I like the bar soaps because I just don't feel like they strip the skin as bad. Okay. So... And yours are good quality and made of great ingredients. <laughs> yeah, I mean, basically, just about anything you can eat for the base. Um, you know, we have our oils, mm-hmm. nice and hot, okay. all liquid now. Right. And then we'll add our olive oil. So why are you are you weighing this now? I am. And why do you do that? Um, it's more accurate to do it by weight than it is okay. by volume. I don't know why, but okay. as long as you stick with one all the way through, if you have a recipe where everything's like by the cup, half cup, and as long as you measure well and stay consistent, mm-hmm. it's fine. Okay. Um, but I found that with weighing everything, it's more accurate. Okay. The only downfall to this scale, Megan, <laughs> this scale doesn't do just ounces. So help me convert. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? 40.5. Two pounds, eight and a half ounces. Thank you. Feed my brain. <laughs> <laughs> the brains of the operation. We have one Megan. scale that does ounces or ounces uh, and pounds. Okay. This one just does pounds and ounces. So we'll pour that in there. It helps cool the oils down some okay. so we don't like destroy the bowl. So we've melted the oils, now we're adding the olive oil. Yep. Megs wants to know if you have a website, can you order online or do you have to go to the shop to pick it up? Um, you can do either. We do have a website. It's um, UncleJohnsSoap.com. So Johns is J-O-N-S and then soap. So there's two S's, no H in the John. So people can order online or they can stop in here. Yep. <laughs> we always love having visitors here. So there's all of our oils okay. that we're going to use. Olive oil, soy, palm, and coconut oil. Mm-hmm. Those are our four main ingredients in most of our bath soaps. Okay. And then, what scent do we want to make? Yeah, I was going to say, there's no that. scent right now. So. Yeah, we didn't talk about any of that. Mm-hmm. So what do we want to make? What do you think, Megan? What do you think, Crystal? Megan's <laughs> like, what do we need more of on the shelf? <laughs> yeah, that's the first place we look. 
butt's getting low. Yeah. Am I low? That's pretty basic. Sure. I mean, we always... Lavender. Lavender, lavender okay. Lavender And then you can show them how to color it a little bit, too. Okay, now over here behind us, John, there, I was asking him earlier, I was like, okay, what are all these things? <laughs> so they're all different fragrances, um, or some are just a, a fragrance, right? Yep. And then some are a mixture of fragrances to get a new fragrances, one. Fragrances, essential oils. Yeah, to get a new one, to get yep. a new smell. Exactly. Which I kind of <laughs> talked about that it was kind of like a vape shop. <laughs> a little Where bit, you're mixing a little bit. flavors and yeah. stuff like that. Mix so. and match, make your own signature style. Okay, so now we're gonna, we grab lavender. So we're gonna make lavender soap today. And something to measure with. Okay, so precise. <laughs> we try. I like it. <laughs> there's a little room, there's a little, a little room for room. flop in this, but you know. Um, and actually, do you wanna do that part? Yeah, that's I'll good. open this one up. Okay. We do four ounces, so the line's just below the lip there. So, oh, this way. So four ounces. So yep. four of these, just pour it right in. You got okay. it. You guys are tuning in. Make sure you let us know where you're watching from. Hey, I'm gonna run out of this. What happens then? So that's your second one. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take that, and now you can continue with that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Four of those. Awesome. And that's hundred dollars a bottle, so we'll recap that Woo! so we don't knock it over. <laughs> don't want to do that. That's intense. <laughs> yeah, when I first started it was, you know, two ounce bottles. Ah, it was just for us, you know, right. little bottles of this and that and now and we where buy do you get them from? Some Yeah, online. There's just there's online. a bunch okay. of places online. I mean, if if you wanted to, you could even go to like, you know, one of the uh, bigger vitamin chain okay. stores, things like that, but Honestly, there are better prices but on now different websites. A big can like that, hundred bucks for lavender. Yeah, Woo! yeah, anywhere between this seventy. This is going to be some good soap. Okay, <laughs> when you're spending that much on, on the essential oil there. Yep. All right. So now, what is this? This is a um, lavender ultramarine powder, which is basically an oxide powder. Okay. Um, they're they're traditionally naturally mined um, minerals, but mm -hmm. you know they. They're still mined, but they're cleaned up in a lab because most minerals that add color come with heavy metals and things in them. Mm -hmm. So, and that's always a concern for people, but right. all the ones that are for cosmetics now do not have the heavy metals and stuff mm -hmm. in them. So okay. that's, that's why I'm not afraid to use at least some. Right. So I usually do like two, two heaping teaspoons. So is this going to help give it that purple color? It does. It gives it a lavendery color. Um, you'll notice when we start making it, it actually goes sort of gray at first. Ooh. All right. And that's perfect. <laughs> that that's, all watching, so. yeah, that's all good. That's all good. And then we mix it up. Okay. So I'm gonna grab that stick blender. Oh my gosh, you trust me with this? No, but we're gonna try. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So make sure it's down in the oil first. And then what I do is I tip it to get the air bubble out from underneath. Tip the bowl or just this? this. Yeah. Okay. See how ah. it gets. Because you don't want a ton of air in there. It just gets weird. It's good. We're going to set me up for fairy. So now you can so. stand it back up. <laughs> and as long as you make sure that stays on the bottom of the bowl. And you the want it time, touching it? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Just leave it right on the bottom of the bowl. This is about to be interesting. And go ahead and turn it on. So just low? Uh, either one. And the idea is to get the, the coloring all through it and get the oils okay. mixed together and everything before we start adding our eye water. So this is the best way to do it. It's a nice little kitchen. <laughs> it's definitely faster. I'm um, sure. Traditionally, people would do this over a fire, then they went to oh. crock pots and actually cook it. And you can use a whisk, but it takes forever. Right. Um, this tends to speed things up a ton. Yeah. Now, How's if you looking? want, let's go ahead and I'm going to show you. Move this over to the side. Okay. And I tip it just a little bit, and it'll help pull some of those oh, right. sections of coloring that aren't dissolving yet. So now. It's that pretty purple color, or violet, if you want to <laughs> <laughs> So this is helping mix it all up. Yep. Yeah, because if you don't get the color mixed in really well, I find that um, 
you'll get little granules that never dissolve in your soap. Okay. And a few of those aren't bad, but I mean, just kind of move it around. So now, a little eye water. And lie. Lye water? Lye water. Okay. So lye, sodium hydroxide, it's a chemical that people know from drain cleaner for years. Mm -hmm. It helps clear the drains. Okay. And part of the reason it helps clear the drains is because um, it helps dissolve fats that get trapped in the drains and things like that. It gets very hot when you add it to water. This is still pretty warm and we mixed it about an hour ago. Oh, wow. Okay. So um, you can't make soap without lye. Mm -hmm. There's just no way around it. So what is it going to help do? It basically reacts with the fats and the water that's in the lye helps okay. emulsify everything and let it do its chemical change. So the lye is going to react with the fats and turn it into a simple salt, which is soap. So you're a chemist, is what you're telling me. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an old carpenter who just happened to learn that stuff, and, you know, I keep building That's that. That's cool, though. But it's very um, cool to know. But, it, you know, people, people get freaked out about lye, and you want to be careful while you're working with it. Okay. But once it's done, once the soap is made and it's being cut, there's no lye left. It's, it's already done. It's turned into a whole new product, basically, at that point. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and mix this in. Okay. Do you make soap every day? Not really. Okay. It depends. Because we make so many other things, we try to... Right. We try to look ahead and make sure we're keeping caught up with everything, mm -hmm. so... And you know, you've learned what's popular, right? I mean, what's so popular? Yep. What's... And sometimes that'll change from one week to the next. Sometimes we get a run on something that hasn't sold in four months, and oh, then all wow. of a sudden it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> then you gotta make soap. So we're just mixing this until it starts to emulsify, and you'll know when it's getting t close oh. to that point because it'll get almost like a pudding, like a light yeah. pudding consistency. And I don't cook my soap because I don't have time to stand there and watch it cook. <laughs> <laughs> and if I did, I don't want to stand there and watch it cook. But you were saying earlier, this is what people used to have to do. Yep. I mean, and you had to make your own soap during depression times if you couldn't afford it or you couldn't find it. Um, Mostly, mostly being able to afford it. I mean, it was available, but, you know, people just didn't have the money for extra right. things. So they learned how to make their own soap? That's cool. Yep. If you were cooking any kind of meat, bacon, pork, um, you could save the fats from that, clean the fat, and actually make soap with wow. it. It's very basic, but it worked. All right, that's about ready. Okay. You see, it just sort of, it's not quite a pudding consistency, right. but... I like to be able to pour it into the mold without yeah. having to mess with it too much. <laughs> I'll put that in there so it doesn't spill anything. You know what? Ah, it'll stay there. <laughs> Alright, so again, the mold here, he built. Yep. We've got it lined with um, trash bag. Is that just so it doesn't stick? Yep, so it doesn't stick. It's okay. easy to get it out of the mold. When we're okay. done, we'll pop the ends off, grab the plastic, and we can just pull it right wow. out. Okay. Alright. Just a nice even pour. Try not to get tons of air bubbles in there. Okay. And so far I haven't spilled any, which is good. Woo! Good job. We're right <laughs> on Facebook Live and everything. Yeah. <laughs> so again, this makes 24 bars. It does. This here. Yeah, we cut our bars about seven eighths of an inch thick. And uh, we just, you know, over the years we used to cut them thicker than that. And we found that most women and even a lot of guys, um, the bar just wasn't very comfortable to hold when it was brand new. Oh, okay. So going just a little bit smaller, skinnier, mm -hmm. made it easier to hold. Nice. And you have lavender soap. It's just that easy. Amazing. So how long would this have to sit? So this will sit for 24 hours. Okay. Um, you can see it's still kind of fluid yeah. and moving around. It'll sit for 24 hours, and then it'll be solid enough to be able to cut into bars. Mm -hmm. And we have a jig that we use to cut one bar at a time. So tell me about how that works. So when this is ready, you would unlatch these things here. Yep. Pull it up. Here, do you remove this one a little bit? <laughs> okay. So you pull it up right, right with the bag, yep. and then put it into this machine. Yep. Then we'll take the plastic off, mm -hmm. and this has a guitar string running across <laughs> this way. You probably can't see it at all, but it's hooked here. 
and it runs down and through the mold or through the guide. Okay. And so you came up with this. Um, I actually saw a design for this online. Okay. Uh, but you built this part. I yeah. did build this um, from somebody else's design. Mm -hmm. So I will clamp this to the counter. Okay. And I will take that log of soap and I will stand it up in here. And the string's running this way, so I will push it through the string and it will cut one bar off the end. Lift it up, come back, and push it through again and just keep feeding the bars out the end. And Megan usually grabs them and stacks them in a tray for us. So okay. You know, usually there's a lot of water weight left in these when you're done cutting them, uh, or they might be sweating, so they're not quite ready to be wrapped in. Some people will let them cure for six to eight weeks. Um, wow. For us, a couple of days and they're ready to be wrapped. And then you wrap them up in all this pretty paper. Yep, we wrap them <laughs> in pretty little paper that's, you know, biodegradable. We try to stay as environmentally conscious as we can. Yeah. Um, so it's it's... It helps keep the cost of the soap down to stay with paper wrapping. Plus, I can print anything I want on the face right. and, you know, make yeah. it look cute that way. I mean, you're going to take it <laughs> home and rip it off anyway, so no sense in getting too snazzy with it. Cool. Okay, so we made soap, lavender soap, which is pretty popular. But you don't just do soaps. Nope. You've, you've now started making your own beard oil and balm, and he just showed me that we have dog soap, which I was super excited <laughs> about. <laughs> yep. um, but there's a little bit of everything. So now what we want to do is... Kind of just walk around the shop. Sure. So let's let's do that. I'm gonna come over here and grab my phone. So again, if you guys are tuning in, let us know where you're watching from. If you have any questions for John, also let us know. And we're gonna walk around the shop. So I guess we should probably just start right <laughs> right here. What <laughs> we do have a question though. Let me make sure. Uh, let me go back here just because we. Yeah. Any questions? Shoot them so, out. So how cool is this? Wow, Meg. Rebecca says, way to go, John. Best soaps ever. Janet says, they keep my face clear and hydrated. Nice. So that's that's good, right? I mean, yep. there's so many benefits to using this soap here. Um, it's such a good quality. And buy local is a huge thing, you know. Um, this is so exciting. Thanks for the information. Does John uh, make the wooden molds to sell? If not, have you ever considered making them? I have considered it. It's something I want to work on. Um, Part of the what we need to do is figure out for the average soap maker, if you're doing it just for you at home, you know, I need to figure out, you know, how much soap do you really want to make for yourself? I'm sure the right. average person making soap just for their family doesn't want to wait and go through 24 bars <laughs> of the same scent. So right. maybe a slightly smaller mold for those people and then a medium and then maybe the full size ones. That's cool. Okay. So Ralph's watching from Kentucky. Carolyn says, great job. Carolyn Wright. Um, Dustin says, John's the man. <laughs> All right. I'll bet I know Dustin. I know who that is. Okay. <laughs> now, Melissa says, are there animal fats in all of your soaps? No. Um, the majority of our bath soaps are all vegetable-based. Um, we do have a few products with animal fats in them because, honestly, it makes a better soap in some instances. Um, for me. Um, our shave soaps are tallow-based. So it really, it, it just high steric content. Now I can go all vegetable with the shave soaps, but people seem to, most of the customers that are into the traditional old shave soaps really like the tallow. Awesome. All right. We got about 28 people watching. So thanks for tuning in guys. Yes. People watching from all over. If you have any questions for John, we're going to walk through now his shop because there's a lot much more uh, than the soap that we just made. So <laughs> let's start here. Let's just start with. Sure. Now these, I know, they, these are razors. <laughs> yep. We have some. Vintage razors here and on the top row. Mm -hmm. We have a couple of new ones mixed in there too. This is a, a newer Rockwell style razor. Uh, this one's from, let's see, this is a, a Phoenix Artisan razor from Phoenix, Arizona. Mm -hmm. um, some old Gillette's, just like <laughs> your grandfather would have used. Oh they open up gosh. and drop the blade right on there. <laughs> That's so cool. Yep, and, and they sell still blades and everything. You sell blades for them. Yeah. Brushes for nice <laughs> brushes for working, whipping up your soap and yeah. applying the lather to your face. So that's and you said, tell me the story about these again with the makeup <laughs> brushes that they came. With. A lot of the same companies that were making makeup brushes. There's there's a lot of crossover. Mm -hmm. So you They're have super soft, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> now these are synthetic knots. Okay. Um, that's mostly what I sell. Um, but traditionally, shave brushes would have been made with badger hair, horse hair, boar, um, and still are to this day. Hmm. 
So and, that would be a little uh, more coarse, right? Uh, like the bore would be a lot more coarse until okay. you get it broken in. But then once it's broken in well, as long as it's a decent quality, um, it'll have tips just as soft as this. It'll just be stiffer overall. Okay. Um, so yeah, everybody has their preference. I'm kind of a synthetic guy. It's wash and go. Right. Yeah. And makeup easy. brushes started out, right, with the, the same, same way. Same way. Yeah. That's cool. All right. So lots of cool stuff in here for the gents. And the ladies, because Crystal <laughs> says uh, she's going to say she's with WBOC. She she uses these, so women, women too. Yeah, All right. absolutely. So let's walk this way. Uh, Dustin's watching from Ohio, watching from Clayton, Delaware, watching from Laurel. Nice. Okay, so tell me about this one. I guess we, you want to just start at the top. Let's start <laughs> at the top. <laughs> Dry yeah. shampoo. We make a dry shampoo. Women love dry shampoo. A lot of them do. <laughs> um, you know, if you have really long hair and it's just a pain to wash, or if you're into conserving water, so you're not going to wash your hair in water every right. day, then a dry shampoo is a perfect fit. Mm -hmm. Got some shampoo over yep. here. Yep, shampoo bars for when you do use uh, water for shampooing. And it's just like a soap. You just lather it up in your hands and then rub it through your hair. Okay. All right. Diaper spray. We got some stuff for babies. <laughs> yep, we do some baby stuff too. <laughs> Diaper spray for helping clean up. Some people um, don't want the chemicals that are in actual commercial baby wipes, so they right. use cloth reusable wipes and a spray like this. Hmm. Um, you know, you can use the spray for that or for just washing face and hands when they, you know, you're out and about and they get all messy. Kids do it right. all the time. So. <laughs> That's cool. And then the baby soap. Yep, that's just a simple Castile soap, mm -hmm. just olive oil, no scent, no color. Okay. So it's a, it's a very hard bar of soap, lasts a long time, but it's not going to irritate skin. All right. Deodorant, you've got stick, and then is this a... It's a deodorant cream. Deodorant. These are actually a lotion bar, um, okay. so they're not going to be as good as a deodorant, but they're okay. very moisturizing, <laughs> so it takes some people getting used to a solid deodorant, or a solid lotion. Okay. The deodorant creams also takes getting used to because sure. <laughs> it's a little softer it's a little more like uh, cake frosting consistency mm, very interesting lip balms down yep. here got a couple different lip balm flavors all right and then we were talking about these earlier too yeah the salves we uh salves, we started okay. the salves for uh guys that were in the military over in uh afghanistan and different places in the desert and their hands get cracked and dry really badly and um they wanted something that would help deal with the cracking of the skin. And uh, in the summertime, they love the mentholated stuff. They okay. like to be able to cool off with the menthol. Uh, their winters over there are just as brutal, if not more, than ours. So mm -hmm. they like the regular stuff in the wintertime. <laughs> right. Someone else is asking, because um, they're just tuning in, where are you located again? Berlin, Maryland, 12 William Street. Um, we're right outside Ocean City, Maryland. So okay. you can either go on the website or come down and visit us here. We're here pretty much seven days a week. All right, so then Shea Butter. Yep, straight up raw shea butter. We get our shea butter from uh, from Ghana. Oh, wow. And uh, we get it in big 25-pound uh, blocks. So we'll we'll chip it down and melt it into these containers so it's easier for people to use at home. Cool, okay. And a cast iron seasoning. Yep, cast iron seasoning. There's another company that makes a similar product out there, but uh, we kind of stole their idea a little bit. There mm -hmm. are no original ideas, I've found. Um, <laughs> so... Um, but yeah, you use it to condition your cast iron pans, and uh, I like using oils too, but this to me, it, this has beeswax added to it, oh, so that's okay. what makes a difference. I think it does something to that coating on your cast iron. It's just mm. fantastic. Very cool. All right, so we'll come this way. Bath salts. Yep, bath salts. Couldn't sell those for a while because of the name. It scared people right. to death, but uh, <laughs> people know what it is now, and they're not afraid of it anymore. It's basically just... Soaking crystals. Okay, and you put it in your bathtub. Yep, a couple Maybe tablespoons cool. in the bathtub. It smells good and it helps your skin soften. All right, and we also got things like sponges and loofahs and things like that that you need. Got to have accessories. Yes, <laughs> and then more bubble baths. Yep, absolutely. Lots of different scents there. <laughs> okay, this is probably your favorite. Thing. <laughs> beard combs and things, right? Yep, beard stuff. Got to love it. Um, and I'm I'm kind of on the fence. I'm I like shaved stuff, but I like beard stuff too. So. Right can't really do a lot of shaving when you have this much beard, so I shave my head. <laughs> Very cool. Yep, so these are oils. different oils. Yep, and like we, we were saying earlier, beard oils and like conditioner and stuff like that for yep. beards are big things for men right now. Absolutely. They all have beards, and that's very cool. Okay. Coming down to this one. Shave stuff. 
course, back more brushes, some comical brushes, brushes and some Minions. serious brushes. <laughs> <laughs> That's very cool. Yep, and we make our own shave soap here. Like I said, it is a, it is a tallow based soap, okay. but um, it's uh, it's soft. So you're just while you're in the shower. Um, some guys can do it in the shower. I'm some not guys. coordinated enough, <laughs> so <laughs> <Neither>. <laughs> basically you would wet your shave brush, especially a synthetic. You basically just wet it, shake out the extra water. And all you're doing with your soap is trying to get it up into the bristles. A lot okay. of guys face lather, so you get the soap loaded into the brush, and then once your face is wet, or head in my case, you start <laughs> whipping the lather up, and you're good to go. It's a lot more slick and protecting than a lot of canned shave creams and stuff, right. so that's why a lot of people are going back to this, plus the nostalgia of it. Right. Okay, so over here, we'll flip to this side. Sugar scrubs. Yep, body scrubs, which we're severely low on right now, but that's okay. <laughs> that's we're, good, though, we'll, we'll right? We'll be ready for the season. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do with these? What is it? What would it be? These you can use in the bath or the tub. Some people just use it for um, exfoliating, like, hands, elbows, knees, feet, things like that. Mm -hmm. Some people, like my sister, use it everywhere. <laughs> Go through a whole jar in one setting, right. I think. <laughs> and then you also have, uh, like, soap trays and stuff, yeah. which are really cool. Cool little soap palettes and things these? like that. I did not. That is a okay. husband-wife team oh, in cool. Oregon, I believe. Very cool. Do that. All right, should we wrap around this way? Sure. All right, we got some scrub and brushes here. Yep. Stuff for your feet. Yeah. Stuff for your nails. <laughs> back scratchers. <laughs> all right, so now this is, here's the soaps. Yep, this is our bread and butter. They've all got different colors, <laughs> which is very cool. But. Yeah, we try to color coordinate a little bit with our, the front of our labels. Uh -huh. We print these ourselves. Again, just all paper. Try to stay somewhat mm -hmm. eco-friendly. So tell me, I want you to, and then we got the doggy soap, which I thought was really cool <laughs> there. But if you, you know, your top three scents that are over here. Oh. Ah, pipe <laughs> smoke is one of them. Pipe smoke. It smells okay. a little bit like uh, a light pipe tobacco, like a fresh pipe tobacco mm -hmm. with a little bit of cherry and vanilla in it. Okay. Um, that's always a popular one, men and women. Um, yeah, you were talking earlier because I was like, where is there any girly soaps, you know? <laughs> but you say the women a lot of times, they yeah. like, that's one of their favorites. Yeah, a lot, I found a lot of women actually like, like Mother Earth. Okay, that is <laughs> probably at least in the top five. Okay. Um, and it's sandalwood and patchouli. Wow. And a lot of women like the darker scents like that. Mm. Um, you've got you've got some pumpkin spice here. You cater toward like, like I mean, at Christmas time you're gonna make some peppermint. We, <laughs> you know, we did. We made one that looked like a little lump of coal, put okay. in a little burlap sack, and you know, uh, it has a little picture of Santa on That's there. Funny. Santa wants you to clean up your act, and you know, <laughs> it was something kind of cute for Christmas. Um, but it's something I think we want to bring back. Um, yeah. Because we don't do a straight peppermint soap yet. We do one that's peppermint and eucalyptus, which people okay. seem to really love, but. Every once in a while, somebody just wants straight up peppermint. So I think that's something we need to add. Yeah. So there's tons of different, tons there, of different kinds. There are. And you come here, just grab some off the shelf, take them home with you. Very cool. Exactly. And then we've got wax melts. Yep. People kept asking us for candles. And ah. uh, as simple as they sound, when you're already making bath stuff, uh, candles can be complicated. So wax melts are easy and we can okay. do them in our right. you know, most popular scents. Mm-hmm. And then I want to mention you got you guys have a lot of a lot of like other friends and yep. and people that are local that you sell their stuff in here. Absolutely, local woodworkers and artisans that do all kinds of stuff. We uh, we like being an outlet for some of those guys too. Yeah, that's awesome. Very cool. So we're not just bath stuff; we're gifts too. Yeah, <laughs> you can come here and do all your shopping. <laughs> that's very cool. Dryer balls. Yep. <laughs> what do they do? They take the plates of liquid softeners and fabric sheets. Oh, you throw those in your dryer in groups of three or more, and it helps take care of softening, helps the clothes dry faster. They'll help with static a little, but if you add like a couple drops of your favorite essential oil or like a linen spray to oh. the outside of it, um, that'll help with static too. And smell. Very cool. So this is that logo you're talking about. Yep. <laughs> it's very Local cool. pottery made. All right. Okay. So I want you to tell me before we head outside. What, what's been your favorite part about opening this little shop in Berlin and selling your soap here? Uh, the people I meet. It's it's crazy. I was never much of a people person growing up. <laughs> so now, but now I never shut up. So, um, but yeah, I I like 
dealing with the different people. Um, you know, everybody has things that they love. You know, some people are really into our laundry soap. Some people into the bath soap, the shave guys, of course. I mean, I'm on probably 30 different shave groups on Facebook. Right. Ironic, I know. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, just meeting the different people and what their, their likes and dislikes are and things like that. Now, you have your own YouTube channel. We do. And you're used to doing these videos like we're doing today. Getting there. <laughs> Edi editing helps. This, right. for me, is different. Live is a little... <laughs> But you're doing great. I'm surviving. <laughs> so with the YouTube videos, what do you talk about on those? Uh, it's all over the map. <laughs> so sometimes it's uh, tips and tricks for soap making. Uh, sometimes I have one playlist that is just me ranting basically and the playlist is called Don't Be a Jerk. Uh, <laughs> you know, people running stop signs or whatever, you know. <laughs> so, or me ranting about somebody else ranting, things like that. <laughs> And uh, just a little entertainment. And you post, are, are they on your Facebook? Will people be able to watch them? Um, I do post some to Facebook. Some to Facebook. So I try to, I try to share it. Uh, I think it shares to our Twitter channel too. Okay. Twitter, whatever that's called. <laughs> See? <laughs> Show my age. He's doing well, Megan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We do have a question. Um, someone, mm -hmm. I don't know if you can answer questions like this, maybe. I'll try. Um, but she said she's tried a lot of professional shampoos, but she wants to find one that doesn't make her head itch. Would you say like using a very like, you know, where this one is like organic and whatever? It could potentially help being more natural. Okay. Um, there's so many variables. Right. You know, it could be how hot are your showers. If you're like me, you're scalding yourself trying to get clean. Um, <laughs> and that doesn't help. That makes itchy skin too. Um, and sometimes, you know, come on in. We'll talk about it. Or shoot me an email. Yeah. You know, you can go right to the website and shoot me an email there and we'll go, talk Susan. about it. <laughs> All right, so one last time, tell them where you're located here in Berlin. We're at 12 Williams Street in Berlin, Maryland, right outside Ocean City. Uh, cool little historic town. Uh, there's more than just us here. You can come down and <laughs> buy some soap and eat lunch and go buy some clothing and olive oil. And there's all kinds of yeah, stuff. Yeah, there's all town. kinds of stuff here in Berlin. So again, we made lavender soap. You have to go back and watch this video to oh, watch yeah. how we did it. That's very cool. So let's walk, let's walk outside just to show everyone, yes, okay? Sir. Let's go this way. That iconic logo, which Megan said should be her. <laughs> <laughs> but again, Uncle John Soap guys, they're right here, right in Berlin. There's the meat market and things like that. So when I walk the dogs, right next to the public restroom. <laughs> yes, I get so much business from that place. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, guys, thanks for watching. See you, John. See you guys.